Okay, so it's been a couple weeks since I brought home this uh, Bradley GT2 kit car. It's like a 1987. Somebody had really high hopes for it and never got finished. Uh, so you buy the kit from this company and then you buy a junk Volkswagen and you take the body off the Volkswagen and you put the fiberglass body on the Volkswagen and then you're done supposedly. But there's other stuff that they don't tell you when you buy those kit cars is that you have to fit the doors and the windows and pretty much everything that an auto manufacturer does. But that's just not reasonable and most people never finish them. So. I got this car and I intend on finishing it and getting it functioning, but Volkswagens are pretty boring and there's no point in putting all this effort into a car when in the end of the day, it's still just a Volkswagen. So uh, we toyed around with some ideas. We had some great suggestions through social media, um, but what I ended up deciding on, both through necessity and, uh, you know, availability is, uh, put a uh, Toyota 4x4 chassis underneath of it. So now it's a uh, Bradley GT2 4x4. I did it without spending a whole lot of money because I already had this uh, Toyota truck sitting out uh, in the field behind my parents place for a couple years. One thing led to another, I took the frame, uh, engine and transmission, all that stuff and merged it underneath of this kit car body, removed all the Volkswagen. It actually turned out to fit really well um, with one exception and that is uh, the engine sort of sticks out of the hood a little bit, gives it the Hot Wheels type look. What I ended up doing is I took 27 inches out of the frame of the Toyota, left the engine and transmission both in the same place where they were on the truck, cut a hole in the hood, and put the body down on the frame. Well, I got the doors working too. It's a little bit. Still need to put the glass in. There is still the problem with very little seating depth. So your head is pretty much into the roof. So I'm gonna have to maybe put some dents here in the uh, floor with which I end up building, but I don't know. <laughs> I break it in half. And I'm not even that tall, so this is a problem. Well, I can see pretty good out the windshield, but even with that big engine in there. Mercedes DeLorean territory right there. Just like them. I pulled out the old Volkswagen engine here, basically with the whole chassis. It was seized up when it was in the car and I thought it was ruined. And it actually does turn over, but it's still only like 60 horsepower. That's not very fun. So I might end up doing something with this chassis, but we'll see in the future. They're sort of fun if they weigh nothing. So maybe make like a little doom buggy out of this thing. Nothing goes to waste around here. Just remember that. I took out a couple of leaf springs in the back. Uh, because it's not a half ton pickup truck anymore, it's just a car. So you wanna have a little bit of suspension travel when you're going off-road, you want it to be flexing, not just bouncing. And we will be going off-road with this because the whole point of this project, other than to being cool and fun to drive around, is uh, I'm gonna try to get it done for the Gambler 500, which is uh, sort of an independent rally that uh, a bunch of poor mechanics have been doing to uh, just have fun with beater cars. We do uh, seasonal roads throughout the country. I think this will fit right in with the crew. So yeah, it'll be a good time. Okay, thanks for watching. Stay tuned how this turns out. I mean, it's gonna be uh, pretty fun regardless. Just gotta get her running and driving now. So it's a minor work and we'll be good to go. See ya.